up front watching the movies. <laughs> yeah, I did that once and lost my wallet. I had my wallet. I was young. It was Indiana Jones uh, in the Temple of Doom. I remember that. I went with my sister and we sat right up front and I lost my wallet. Library card. I mean, what? <laughs> Which to me was, I, I made good use of that. Um, but other things, never did find it. And so honestly, that is why my wallet stays in my front pocket. The things that it, yeah, that I also was helpful when I used to go, uh, my theater professor used to take us to uh, New York over Thanksgiving. And I was told um, that, um, I was told that, uh, you know, you want to be careful about your wallet and all that. And I'm like, well, I'm checking on my wallet every time I put my hands in my pants. So. The things that work out over time. So friends, um, thank you uh, for joining me in something that I, I did the math, not in my head because I'm not that smart anymore, uh, but on my phone. Um, I've been doing some version of this for the last 28 years. Um, I first heard the Gospel of Mark in its entirety in one sitting when I was in seminary at the Lutheran School of Theology in Chicago uh, back in probably 1993-94. And uh, my seminary professor, David Rhodes, had the thing memorized. Uh, and I heard in that presentation things that we had talked about in class. You hear the repetitions. You see the connection between things in a way that you don't when you get it just in little episodes and snippets like we do in worship. I was a theater major in college. It appealed to that. Uh, and so I began learning to do it. Now you'll note, I don't have it memorized. Uh, hopefully this will in some way, shape or form disappear. Um, I do this for myself and I particularly do it on Palm Sunday because we're entering into this holy week. And the Gospel of Mark is one where literally there is a reading for every day of the week as we go through this coming week. You'll hear it uh, at the tail end of the reading. Um, I do this one because it's the shortest Gospel. It'll take us roughly two hours. It's about an hour each half, all the way up to the midpoint of the Gospel, the exact kind of tipping point of the gospel, which interestingly is halfway through. So this is where we get to little audience uh, participation. Um, do we think uh, that at that moment about a five minute break would be enough for you to stretch to restroom and all of that stuff and get back? Okay. So when we hit that moment, I'll take my leave. 
uh, wet my whistle, take just a, a few minutes, and about five minutes later, I'll come back in and I'll get us started. Okay? Um, interact. Um, it is the gospel. It is the gospel. But it's also story. Interact with the story. It's okay. I'm going to come near you. I'll come away from you. I'll look at you and I'll point at you. I'm not turning you into the villain of the story or whatever it might be, but just understand that I'm going to interact with you in the midst of this as well. But I will say unto you the same thing that Jesus says several times. Let everyone who has ears to hear listen. Listen to it. Listen not just with your ears, but with your heart. And my prayer is that as we go through this week, this text will also go with you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, may these holy words rest in our hearts. And as for me, O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth shall declare your praise. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord! Make his paths straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In the whole Judean countryside, all the people of Jerusalem were coming out to be baptized by John in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed in camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. Huh? He proclaimed. The one who's coming after me. He, he's more powerful than I. I, I. I, I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandal. I have baptized you with, with water. But he, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now, in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the river Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens ripped in two and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And immediately... The Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels. The angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, John, the brother of James, in the boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, 
And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired hands and followed him. They went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and he taught. Well, they were astounded at his teaching. For Jesus taught as one having authority and not in the manner of the scribes. Now, just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, Ah, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying in a loud voice, came out. Well, they were all amazed and kept asking one another, What then is this? Oh, a new teaching with authority. He commands even, even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once, Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Now, as soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. They told him about her at once. And Jesus came, and he took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening after sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. The whole city gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases. He cast out many demons, but he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Now, in the morning, when it was still very dark, Jesus got up, went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted him down, and when they found him, they said to him, uh, Hey, everyone is searching for you. And Jesus said to them, No, let us go to the neighboring towns and villages, so that I may proclaim the message there also for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. A leper came, and begging him and kneeling, he said to Jesus, If you choose, you can make me clean. Now, moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I do choose. Be made clean. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. Now after sternly warning him, Jesus sent him away at once, saying to him, ah, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priests and offer for them what Moses commanded as a testimony to them of your cleansing. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word so that Jesus could no longer go into town openly, but he stayed out in the country. And people, people came to him from, from every quarter. He returned to Capernaum after some days, and it was reported that Jesus was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, even in front of the door. And Jesus was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing with them a paralyzed man carried by four of them. When they realized they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, well, they, they removed the roof over his head. And after having dug down through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. Now when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak this way? It's, it's blasphemy. I mean, who can forgive sins but God alone? 
Now Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, take your mat, go to your home? But, so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took his mat and he went out before all of them so that all were amazed and glorified God saying, Phew, we have never seen anything like this. Jesus went out again beside the sea and the whole crowd gathered around him and he taught them. And as he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax booth. And he said to him, <clears throat> follow me. And he got up and followed him. As he sat at dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed Jesus. Now, when the scribes of the Pharisees saw that Jesus was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, <clears throat> Why does he eat with sinners and tax collectors? Now, when Jesus heard this, he said to them, Ah, those who are uh, well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, therefore I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Now, John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees were fasting. And people came and they asked Jesus, um, why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, the wedding guest cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? No. While the bridegroom is with them, they cannot fast. But the days are coming, and the bridegroom will be taken away from them. They will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak. Otherwise, the patch will pull away from it, the new from the old. A worse tear is made. And, and no one puts fresh wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins. The wine is lost, so are the skins. So one puts fresh wine into new wineskins. One Sabbath, as he was going through the grain fields, his disciples, as they followed him, began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, 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 look! Why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, ha, Have you never heard what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? Well, he entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. The Sabbath is made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Again, Jesus entered the synagogue, and there was a man there who had a withered hand. And they watched the man to see whether Jesus would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse Jesus. Jesus said to the man with the withered hand, Come forward. And then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save a life or to kill? But they were silent. Jesus looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart. And he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he 
stretched it out, and it was restored. And immediately they left the synagogue and conspired with the Herodians against Jesus how to destroy him. Jesus departed with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude from Galilee followed him. Hearing all that he was doing, they came to him in great numbers from, from Judea and Jerusalem, Idumea, uh, beyond the Jordan, the, the region up around Tyre and Sidon. He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd so that they would not crush him. For he had cured many, so that all who had diseases pressed in upon him, even to touch him whenever the unclean spirits saw him. Well, they fell down and shouted, Oh, you are the Son of God! But he would not permit the demons to speak. Jesus went up a mountain, and he called to him those whom he wanted, and they came to him, and he appointed twelve whom he also named apostles, to be with him and to be sent out to proclaim the message and to have authority to cast out demons. And so he appointed the twelve. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter. James, son of Zebedee. John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder. <laughs> and Andrew and Philip. Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Then he went home. And a crowd came together, again, <laughs> so that they could not even eat. Now, when Jesus' family heard of it, they went out to restrain him, for people had been saying, whew, he's gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and it is by the ruler of demons that he casts out demons. And Jesus called them to him, and he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And, and if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And, and if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, well, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed his property can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven their sins, whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said that he has an unclean spirit. Then Jesus' mother and his brothers came, and they were standing outside and calling him. And there was a crowd sitting around him, and they said to him, um, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those seated around him, he said, here, here, here is my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my sister and brother and mother. Again, he began to teach beside the sea. And such a very large crowd gathered around him. He got into a boat. He sat there. The whole crowd was around him on the land. And he began to teach them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, Listen, listen, ah, listen. <laughs> um, a sower <clears throat> went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of soil. And then when the sun rose, it was scorched. Since it had no root, it weathered away. Some seed fell among the thorns, 
and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded nothing. And some seed fell on good soil and brought forth grain, growing and increasing and yielding 30, 60, 100 fold. Let everyone who has ears to hear listen. Now, when he was alone, those around him, along with the twelve, asked Jesus about the parables. And he said to them, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables in order that they may indeed look but not perceive. They may indeed listen but not understand so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. <laughs> Do you not understand the parables? <laughs> then how will you understand all the parables? The, the sower sows the word. Now these are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. These are the ones on rocky ground. When they hear the word, immediately they receive it with joy. But they have no root and endure only a little while so that when persecution or trouble arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world, the, the, the lure of wealth, the desire for other things comes in, chokes it, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on good soil. They hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Thirty, sixty, a hundredfold. It's a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? No. There's nothing hidden except to be disclosed. There's nothing secret except to come to light. Don't let anyone who has ears to hear listen attention to what you hear. Hmm? The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given. For to those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how the earth produces of itself first the stalk then the head then the full grain on the head but when the grain is ripe at once he goes in with his sickle for the harvest has come with what can we compare the kingdom of god what parable shall we use for it uh, the kingdom of god is like a mustard seed which, when sown on the earth, is the smallest of all seeds. And yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can nest in its shade. Now, with many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. And he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Now on that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind them, they took Jesus in the boat with them, just as he was. There were other boats with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he woke up and he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was dead calm. And then Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? The disciples were filled with great awe, and they said to one another, Who then is this 
Let even the wind and the sea obey him. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. Now, the man had lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain, for he'd often been restrained with shackles and chains. The, the chains he wrenched apart, the shackles he broke into pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling, bruising himself with stones. Now, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed before him. He shouted at the top of his voice, Oh, what have you to do with this? Jesus, Son of the Most High God, I abjure you by God. Do not torment me. For Jesus had said to him, Be silent and come out of him, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? And he replied, My name, my name, my name is Legion. For we are many. Now he begged Jesus earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now, there was on the hillside a great herd of swine feeding. And the unclean spirits begged Jesus, send us, send us, send us. Oh, send us into the swine. Let us enter them. And so Jesus gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and they entered into the swine. And the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The swine herds ran off. They began to tell it to everyone in the city and in the country, and people came to see, well, what it was that had happened. And they saw, they saw Jesus and the demoniac, the demoniac sitting there, clothed in his, his right mind, the very man who had had the legion, and they, they were, they were afraid. Now those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it, and then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. And as Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged Jesus that he might be with him, but Jesus refused and he said, no, no, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you, what mercy he has shown you. And he went away, and he began to proclaim it in the Decapolis, how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. Now, when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, a man named Jairus, came when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and he begged him repeatedly, ah, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come, 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 lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And Jesus went with him. Now, a large crowd followed Jesus, pressed in on him. And in the crowd, there was a woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians. She'd spent all that she had, and she was no better. Rather, she grew worse. Now, she had heard about Jesus, and she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. And immediately, the hemorrhage stopped, and she could feel in her body that she was healed of her disease now, immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, Oh, oh you see this crowd pressing in upon you. How can you say, Who touched me? But Jesus began to look to see who had done this. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Now, while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader of the synagogue's house to say, Your daughter is dead. 
why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing them, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to go with him except for Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Now, when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. And he put them outside. And he would allow no one to enter except for the girl's parents and those who were with him. And he came in to where the child was. And he took her by the hand. And he said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And she got up and began to walk around, for she was 12 years of age. Now, at this, they were overcome with amazement, and, and Jesus strictly ordered them to tell no one about this and told them to give her something to eat. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, Jesus began to teach in the synagogue. Now, many who heard him were astounded, and they said, where did this man get all of this? What's this wisdom that's been given to him? What, what deeds of power are being done by his hands? Now, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas ooh, and Simon, and, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said, ha, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out among the villages teaching and he called the twelve and he began to send them out two by two, and he gave them authority over unclean spirits. Now he ordered them to take nothing for their journey except for a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. And if any place will not welcome you, they refuse to listen to you. As you leave, shake the dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out. They proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Now, King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had uh, become known... And some were saying, John, the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason the powers are at work in him. But others said, ah, it is Elijah. And still others said, eh, eh, it, 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 it's a prophet, mm -hmm. like the prophets of old. <laughs> but when Herod heard of it, he said, oh, John, whom I beheaded has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men to arrest John, bound him, put him in prison. On account of Herodias, his, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. Because John had been telling Herod, it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Now, Herodias had a grudge against John. She wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. Now, when Herod heard John, he was greatly perplexed. And yet, he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers, for the leaders of Galilee. 
And when his daughter by Herodias came in and danced, oh, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it you. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you. I even half my kingdom. <laughs> well, she went out and she asked her mother, what should I ask for? And her mother replied, <laughs> the head of John the baptizer. And so the girl came back in and she said to the king, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on a platter. Well, the king was deeply grieved. Yet, out of regard for his oaths and his guests, he did not want to refuse her. So immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. And he went and he beheaded John in prison. And then he brought his head on a platter, gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. Now when John's disciples heard of it, they came and they took his body and laid it in a tomb. The apostles gathered around Jesus. They told him everything that they had done and he had taught. And he said to them, come, come, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves. Rest a while. For many were coming and going so that they had no leisure even to eat. And so they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now, many saw them going, recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and villages. And they arrived there ahead of them. And so as Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd. And he had compassion on them. For they, they, they were like, like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Now when it grew late, Jesus said, his disciples came to Jesus and they said, uh, Teacher, this, this is a deserted place. The, the hour is now late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus answered them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, uh, uh, five. Hmm? Oh, and uh, two fish. And so Jesus ordered them to get the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. And so they sat down in groups of fifties and hundreds. And taking the five loaves and two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven. And he blessed and he broke the loaves gave them to his disciples to set before all the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces and of the fish. Now those who had eaten numbered about 5,000 men. Now immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat, go on ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after saying farewell to them, Jesus went up the mountain to pray. Now, when evening had come, Jesus was alone on the land, the boat was out on the sea, and he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind. And so Jesus came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. And he intended to pass them by. But when they saw Jesus walking on the sea, they thought he was a ghost. And they cried out, for they were terrified. And immediately Jesus spoke to them and he said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. 
and they were utterly astounded because they did not understand about the loaves, for their hearts were hardened. Now when they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret, moored the boat, and when Jesus got out of the boat, people at once recognized him. And they rushed throughout the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats wherever they heard that he was. And wherever he went, in villages or cities or, or farms, they laid the sick in their marketplaces, begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who came down from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without ritually washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market uh, or without thoroughly washing it. There are also many other traditions they observe the washing of pots and cups and bronze kettles. and well. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, eh, eh, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And Jesus said to them, huh. Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the command of a commandment of God and hold to human precepts. You've got a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God according to your tradition. For Moses said, hmm, honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of father and mother must surely die. But you tell anyone who says to father and mother, well, whatever support you might have had from me is korban, that is an offering to God, then you no longer permit them to do anything for father and mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on. You do many things like this. Then he called the crowd together and he said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. The things that come out are what defile. Now, when he had left the crowd and they entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. And he said to them, then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile because it enters not the heart but the stomach and then goes out into the sewer? Thus he declared all foods clean. It is what comes out of a person that defiles. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, deceit, wickedness, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they are what defile a person. From there, he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. And he entered a house, and he did not want anyone to know that he was there, and yet he could not escape notice. And a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about Jesus. She came, she bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus said to her, let the children eat first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and feed it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The, the demon has left your daughter. She went home, and she found her child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. They returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon, 
towards the Sea of Galilee, the region of the Decapolis, and they brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech. They begged Jesus to lay his hands on him. So Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd. He put his fingers in his ears. He spat and he touched his tongue. And then looking up to heaven, he sighed and he said, which means be open. And they immediately, his ears were opened, his tongue released, and he began to speak plainly. And then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. Yeah, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astounded beyond measure, saying, Phew, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Now, in those days, there was again another crowd without anything to eat. And he called his disciples and he said to them, I have compassion for this crowd, for they have been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they'll faint on the way. Some of them have come a great distance. And his disciples replied, how can one feed these people with bread here in the desert? And Jesus said, how many loaves do you have? And they replied, uh, seven. So Jesus ordered that the crowd should sit down on the ground. And then he took the seven loaves. And after giving thanks, he broke them, gave them to his disciples to distribute, and they distributed them to the crowd. They also had a few small fish. And after blessing them, he ordered that these two should be distributed. And they ate and were filled. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. Now there were about 4,000 people. And he sent them away and immediately got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanutha. Now the Pharisees came and they began to argue with Jesus, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and went, Why does this generation ask for a sign? I... Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them. And getting into the boat again, he went across to the other side. Now, the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread. They only had one loaf with them in the boat. Jesus cautioned them, saying, watch out. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. And they said to one another, yeah, it's because we have no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, why, why are you talking about having no bread? I, do you still not perceive or understand? I, I, are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? I, when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of the broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, uh, 12? And the seven for the 4,000. How many baskets full of the broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, seven. And he said to them, do you not yet understand? They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man to Jesus, begging him that he might touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand, led him out into the country, and he put saliva on his eyes, laid his hands on him, and he asked him, can you see anything? And the man looked up and he said, ah! I can see people, <laughs> um, but, but, but they look like trees walking. And so Jesus laid his hands on him again, and looking intently, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then Jesus sent him away to his home, saying, Ah, Dad, don't even go back into the village. Jesus went with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, Jesus asked his disciples, uh, 
who are people saying that I am? And they answered him, well, uh, John the Baptist, still others, Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And then he asked them, well, who are you saying that I am? And Peter answered him, you, you are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but human things. And he called the crowd together with his disciples, and he said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save it. What will it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Truly I tell you, there are those who are standing here who will not taste death until they have seen the kingdom of God has come with power. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John. And he led them up a high mountain, apart, by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, such that no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And then Peter said, uh, Rabbi, um, it's good that we are here. Uh, let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. But just then, a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus.
Now, as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. And so they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. And then they asked him, oh, why did the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And Jesus said to them, if indeed Elijah is coming first to restore all things, how then is it written about the Son of Man? If he is to go through many sufferings, be treated with contempt. But I tell you that Elijah has come. And they did to him whatever they wished, as it is written about him. Now when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd gathered around them and some scribes arguing with them. Now when the whole crowd saw Jesus, they were immediately overcome with awe and they ran forward to greet him. And Jesus asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered, uh, the teacher, I brought you my son. He has a spirit that makes him unable to speak and it seizes him and it dashes him down. He foams, he, he grinds his teeth, becomes rigid. I, I, I asked your disciples to cast it out, but, but they could not. And Jesus answered them, you faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. When they brought the boy to him, the spirit saw Jesus and immediately convulsed the boy, fell on the ground, rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. It has often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you are able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you are able, all things can be done for the one who believes. And immediately the father of the child said, I believe. Help my unbelief. Now when Jesus saw the crowd rushing together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying, You spirit that keeps this boy from speaking and hearing, I say to you, come out of him and never enter him again. And the unclean spirit, crying out and convulsing the boy terribly, came out. And the boy was like a corpse. So that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. After they went into the house, his disciples asked him privately, well, why could we not have cast it out? And Jesus said to, him, said to them, this kind. This kind can only come out through prayer. They went on from there and they passed through Galilee and he did not want anyone to know it for he was teaching his disciples saying to them, the son of man is to be betrayed into human hands and they will kill him and three days after being killed he will rise again. But they did not understand and they were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, um, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another who was the greatest. So Jesus sat down, and he called the twelve, and he said to them, whoever wants to be first among you must be last of all and servants of all. Then he took a child and he put it among them. And then taking it in his arms, he said, whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Now John said to him, teacher, we saw someone casting out a demon in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, no, no, do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will soon thereafter be able to speak evil of me. No, whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, 
Whoever offers you a cup of water to drink because you bear my name will by no means lose reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, well, it would have been better for you if a great millstone had been hung around your neck and you'd been flung into the sea. If, if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And, and, and if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into the fire where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone, everyone is salted with fire. Salt. Salt, salt, salt. Salt is good. Mm -hmm. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves. And be at peace with one another. He left that place and went to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And crowds again gathered around him. And as was his custom, he taught them. And some Pharisees came, and to test him, they said, um, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And Jesus answered them, Well, what did Moses command you? And they replied, Well, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Yes, it is because of your hardness of heart that he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God created them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no human separate. Now in the house, Jesus' disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Now people were bringing little children to him in order that he might bless them. And his disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. And he said, no, no, let the little children come to me. <laughs> Do not stop them. <laughs> For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Oh, truly I tell you. Whoever does not receive the kingdom as a little child will never enter it. And he took them in his arms and he laid his hands on them and blessed them. As he set out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, well, teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you lack one thing. Go. Go. Sell all that you have, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Now when he heard this, he was shocked, and he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. And Jesus looked at his disciples and said, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. His disciples were perplexed by these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is for anyone to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astounded. They began to say to one another, Who then? Who can be saved? And Jesus said to them, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. 
Now, Peter began to say, well, look, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, yes, truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or mother or sisters or father or children or fields for my sake and the sake of the gospel who will not receive now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mother, children, fields, and persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem. Jesus was walking ahead of them, and they were amazed. Those who followed behind were afraid. And he took the twelve aside again, and he began to tell them what will happen to him. See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes. They will condemn him to death, and then they will hand him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him spit on him, flog him, and kill him. And after three days, he will rise again. Now, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward and they said to him, uh, <laughs> Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask you. And Jesus said to them, uh, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, ha, uh, uh, Grant us to sit, one at your right and one at your left in your glory. And then Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking for. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, yeah, <laughs> We are able. And then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. The baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or my left, not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. Now, when the ten heard about this, they began to be angry with James and John, and Jesus called them, and he said to them, You know that among the Gentiles... Those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them. Uh, their great ones are tyrants over them. It is not so among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. Now when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now many sternly ordered him to shut up, but he shouted all the more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me! Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. And so throwing off his cloak, he sprang up. He came to Jesus, and Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Ah, my dear. Let me see again. And Jesus said, Go. Your faith has made you well. And he regained his sight and followed him. Now when they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you'll find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it, bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say to them, the Lord has need of it and will return it here immediately. And so they went away 
and they found a colt tied near the door. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said, hey, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. And then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields, and those who went ahead and those who followed behind were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David! Hosanna in the highest! And they entered Jerusalem, and he went to the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, Jesus went out to Bethany with the twelve. Now on the following day, when they came from Bethany, Jesus was hungry, and seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he might find anything on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. And then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple, and he began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers, the seats of those who were selling doves, and he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them, saying, Is it not written, My house shall be a house of prayer for all nations, but you, you have turned it into a, a den of robbers. Now when the chief priests and scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him because of the crowd who was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered, and he said, uh, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus said to him, have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Whenever you stand praying, forgive if anyone has anything against you so that your Father in heaven might also forgive you your trespasses. Again, they came to Jerusalem. And as they were walking in the temple, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders came to Jesus and they said to him, Ah, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority to do them? And Jesus said to them, huh, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Hmm? Ah. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? Answer me. And they began to discuss among themselves. Now, if we say from heaven... Then he will say, why did you not believe him? But, but shall we say of human origin? For they were afraid of the crowd who all regarded John as truly being a prophet. And so they answered Jesus. <clears throat> we do not know. And Jesus said, then neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. And then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, dug a pit, built a wine press, a watchtower, put a fence around it. And then he leased it to tenants, went to another country. Now when the season came, he sent one of his servants to the tenant to collect his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him, beat him, sent him away empty-handed. And again, he sent another slave this one they beat over the head, insulted. He sent another. That one they killed. So it was with many others. Some they beat, others they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. 
Finally, he sent him to them saying, well, surely they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, this, this is the heir. Come, come, let us kill him, and then the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, threw his body out of the vineyard. Now what then will the owner of the vineyard do? Hmm? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not heard the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it was amazing in our eyes. Now, when they realized that Jesus told this parable against them, they wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowd, and so they left him and went away. Then they sent to him, some Pharisees, and some Herodians to trap Jesus in what he was saying. They came to him and they said, Teacher, ah, teacher, uh, we, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Now, now, now it is, is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? I, 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 should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, Jesus said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius, let me see it. And they brought him one. And Jesus said to them, uh, Whose head is this? Whose title? And they replied, The emperor's. And Jesus said, Oh, well, then give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's. And give to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed. Now some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and they asked him a question. Teacher, uh, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. There were, uh, oh, seven brothers the first married, when he died, left no children. The second married the widow, died, leaving no children. The third likewise, none of the seven less children left, left children. Last of all, the woman herself died. Now, in, in, the, uh, <laughs> in the resurrection, now, now, whose wife shall she be? For the seven married her. Jesus said to them, is not this the reason that you are wrong? That you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they're like the angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses uh, the story about the bush? How God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God not of the dead, but of the living. No, you are quite wrong. Now one of the scribes came near, heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that Jesus had answered him well, he said, Ah, which commandment is first of all? And Jesus answered the first, is hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, ah, You are right, teacher. You have truly said he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with, with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the strength, to love one's neighbor as oneself, ah, this, is, this is much more important than, than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said, you, you, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared ask him any question. While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he said, now, how can the scribes say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself, by the Holy Spirit, declared, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, and I will put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him 
Lord. So how can he be a son? And there was a large crowd listening to him with delight. And he taught them, beware. Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, to be greeted with respect in the marketplace, to have the best seats in the synagogues, the places of honor at the banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearances say, Ooh, long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And then he went and sat down opposite the treasury, and he watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Now many people, rich people, put in large sums. And a poor widow came, and she put in two small copper coins worth about a penny. And then Jesus called his disciples, and he said to them, now, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who were contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Oh, teacher, large stones, or it's large buildings. And Jesus answered him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting at the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked Jesus privately, Now tell us, when will this be? How will we know that this is about to be accomplished? And so Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. Now when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. But as for yourselves, beware, for they will hand you over to councils. You will be beaten in synagogues. You will stand before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them. And the good news must first be proclaimed to all nations. Now, when they bring you to trial and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but speak whatever is given you at the time. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death. A father, his child, children will have their parents put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. But when you see the desolating sacrilege set up where it ought not to be, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. The one on the housetop must not go down and enter the house to take anything away. The one in the field must not turn back to get their cloak. And woe to those who are pregnant or nursing in those days. Pray that it would not be in winter, for in those days there will be suffering such as not been seen from the beginning of the creation that God has created until now, no, never will be. And if the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would be saved. But for the sake of the elect whom he chose, he has cut short those days. And if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, look, there he is, do not believe it. False messiahs, false prophets will appear and produce signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, the elect. But be alert. I have already taught you everything. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the, the stars will be falling from heaven, the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in great power and glory, and, and he will send the angels, and they will gather his elect from the four corners of the earth to the end of heaven. And so from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as the branch becomes tender, puts forth its leaves, you know summer's near. 
So also, when you see these things taking place, you know he is near at the very gates. For I tell you, truly, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But, about that day or that hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware. Keep alert. For you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, he puts his slaves in charge, each to his work, commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to you all, keep awake. Now, it was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there'll be a riot among the people. Now, while Jesus was at Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard. She broke open the jar and poured it over his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, now why has this ointment been wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for what, 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they began to scold her. And Jesus said to them, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you will always have the poor with you. You can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests and scribes in order to betray Jesus to them. Now when they heard it, they were greatly pleased. They promised to give him money. And so Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples went to him and they said, uh, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? And so Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him wherever he enters. Say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He'll show you a large room, upstairs and furnished. Make preparations for us there. And so the disciples set out and went to the city, and they found everything just as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. Now when it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. So they began to be distressed and agitated and to ask him one after another, Well, surely not I, Lord, surely not I. Jesus said, it is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written about him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one never to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this is my body. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it, and he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. 
And when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. And Peter said to him, Well, even though all these become deserters, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you, you will deny me three times. And he said vehemently, No, even though I must die with you, I would never deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John. They began to be distressed and agitated, and he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. I mean, remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground, and he prayed that if it were possible, this cup might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, remove this cup from me. Not what I want, but what you want. And he came, and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you might not come into the time of trial. Oh, the Spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. And again, Jesus went away and he prayed, saying the same words. Once more he came and he found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. They did not know what to say. And he came a third time and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See? My betrayer is at hand. And while he was still speaking, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd bearing swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now, the betrayer had given them a sign saying, The one who I kiss is the man. Arrest him, lead him away under guard. And so when Judas came, he went up to Jesus at once and he said to him, A rabbi! And he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword, struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? As if I were a bandit. Oh, day after day, I was with you in the temple and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And all of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of the cloth and they left it behind and he ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes were assembled. Now Peter followed them at a distance into the courtyard of the high priest and he was sitting with the guards warming himself by the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death but they found none for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up, they gave false testimony, saying, Now we have heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. And then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it they testify against you? 
But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus answered him, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothes and he says, Why do we still need witnesses? You, you have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And all of them declared him deserving of death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, to strike him, saying, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. Now while Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by, and when she saw Peter warming himself by the fire, she stared at him and she said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But Peter denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt, and the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, well, he is one of them, but again he denied it. And then after a little while, the bystanders began to say to him, well, surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath, saying, I do not know this man that you are talking about. And at that moment, the cock crowed the second time, and then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Peter broke down and wept. Now, as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders, the scribes, the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, ha, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, oh, You say so. And then the chief priest began to accuse him of many things. Pilate asked him, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus refused to answer so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release for them anyone whom they wanted. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels having committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. And he answered them, Ah, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For Pilate realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Well, then... What do you wish for me to do with a man you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify! Crucify him! And so Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, handed him over to be crucified. And the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters. They called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after taking some thorns and twisting it into a crown, they put it on his head. And then they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat on him, knelt down in homage to him. And then after mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak. They put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. 
And then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Divided his clothes among themselves, casting lots to see what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him, and the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with them they crucified two bandits, one at his right and one at his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! You! who would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests and the scribes were also mocking him among themselves, saying, oh, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Oh, let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. And those who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him. Now when it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Ah! Eloi! Eloi! Lama sabachthani! My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? Now those who were standing nearby said to one another, Listen, he, he's called for Elijah. One of them ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, held it up for him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah will come and take him down. And at that moment, Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the temple was ripped in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing Jesus saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were women looking on from a distance, and among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, Joseph Salome. They used to follow him, provided for him when he was in Galilee. There were many other women who had come up with Jesus to Jerusalem. Now when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also waiting expectantly for the coming kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered that he was already dead. And after summoning the centurion, he wondered whether he had been dead for some time. And when he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, he wrapped it in a linen cloth, and he laid it in a tomb hewn out of the rock, and he rolled a great stone against the door of the tomb. Now Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Now when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early, on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went out to the tomb. And they'd been saying to one another, well, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe sitting on the right side. They were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. Look, see where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And so they 
ran out and fled from the tomb, for, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said, they said, they said nothing to anyone because they, they were afraid. gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I will honor your time commitment, but if you have any questions or wish to process together some, I'm willing to sit for those who might. Otherwise, I will certainly bid you a farewell. Thank you for doing this with me. Uh, it's part of my piety uh, for this week. So uh, if you wish to chat, stay put. Otherwise, I'll see you all later. Come in peace. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. I think so. That is my favorite.